Good morning, board members. Paul Connery, administrator with the Division of Forest and Wildlife. Uh, item C1 is a uh, request to enter into a curatorship agreement with On, Tar on Target Inc. Uh, to for uh, the development of our Hawaii public shooting range at Kuanahulu uh, in the Kuanahulu Game Management Area on Hawaii. Uh, I've got a, a revision uh, amendment to that. Now, after uh, discussions with the uh, Deputy Attorney General, uh, they advised that there was uh, probably a, there was uh, a problem with the MOA, uh, all of the uh, components of the MOA. Uh, some of those things involved actions that uh, uh, would only be uh, able to initiate after the environmental assessment is completed at the shooting range. And so um, with that, we, we are asking that the board uh, go ahead and, and consider continuing with a, yeah, an agreement in a way with the on target need, but then just for technical assistance in planning and design of the shooting range, which uh, is kind of the, the stage that we're at right now. Uh, and so I've got uh, copies of <coughs> Revisions to the recommendations that uh, we'd like the board to uh, consider. So, Paul, are you, or did the curation agreement get to say the same, or just adding that? Uh, no, it would. It would. It, it, uh, no, it would. It would basically change, uh, and then the the change. So, uh, with that, what what I'll be doing is asking then the board to delegate to the chairperson. Uh, the authority to negotiate, draft, and approve an MOA or curatorship agreement with mm -hmm. on target uh, to uh, assist with the technical assistance and planning and design of the uh, public shooting range. And so it's basically uh, scaling it down to just cover the activities for planning and design, technical assistance and planning and design. So, so then later on, um, after um, the environmental reviews done and all, all things worked out and we come back with a more exclusive yes. curation agreement that would cover some of the stuff that's already in place. Yes, and so then that would be <coughs> the next step once, once the uh, environmental uh, compliance <coughs> work is done. Then we would actually know, yes, we are going to have a shooting range. Uh, and at that point, then if, uh, the type of agreement could be developed for, you know, who would be, you know, the partner for helping me uh, operate uh, and participate in the actual operations of the shooting. 
So then that would basically then, um, free up the, the other half of the relationship on you know, uh, what would be appropriate for them to assist with you know, helping to <coughs> develop, maintain, operate, and those types of things will be covered in the environmental assessment. And we've got representatives from on, on target here. Uh, I would like to add that one day have been pursuing a labor of love on this project for, for years and years and years. Uh, they are uh, a group representing you know, uh, lots and lots of <coughs> sportsmen on the Big Island that you know, they've come together and they've helped us uh, for years in, in moving this project along with uh, you know, helping with uh, organizing the community, kind of finding out what they want. So they're actively involved in the uh, development of uh, environmental documentation. So they've been a great partner and uh, we look forward to continuing to work with them in the future. So I would then uh, ask the board to one, uh, amend the recommendations to and go forward with an agreement um, uh, with Jeff's planning and design and then also uh, delegate that to the chairperson to So when you were talking with AG on this, um, was there any discussion about, um, was there other avenues to, uh, that could we put a, could we, uh, put a, just a condition on the original recommendation that um, none of the activities in the MOU could be, you know, can be initiated until um, the 242 process is completed or is yeah, that's, so that's you know, for, for more of those other activities. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think when uh, discussed with the, the AG, that, that's kind of the, what the, some of the recent court court cases or at least their advice is that um, that would be authorizing <coughs> approval because at this point you don't know that there will actually be a shooting range until you get to that point. I'm Richard Hefflinger. I'm the uh, president of On Target Incorporated. Uh, I've been involved uh, and our predecessor organization, uh, the Hawaii Island Public Shooting Range Working Group, since uh, 2004. Um, I submitted some testimony to you. I, I won't read it again, but basically we uh, pulled together the community, uh, interrogated them on what their needs and desires are. I think we've done a fairly good job of doing that. We've got something for everyone that we know of on the range. Uh, we've uh, put out requirements, submitted them to deal on our engineering from that. Uh, we've got a contract going now with PBR Hawaii to do the master plan and the environmental assessment and we're currently helping them do the, those, those tasks. So, uh, I'm told uh, as of the other day that uh, we expect possibly the uh, environmental assessment will be completed about April of next year. So uh, if you have any questions I'd be glad to answer them. I think we've been, uh, we've got everybody on the island and most people in DLNR in completely transparent with everybody. They're all invited to our meetings. We meet monthly at uh, Kamuela, uh, and uh, there's quite a uh, list of, uh, that we put out of people interested to come. We let them know when the meeting starts, and we've had really good participation. Uh, answer any questions. My typical, my standard question is, are you okay with the uh, amended recommendation? The, the funding for the EA and the, uh, the uh, subject design is Pittman Robertson money. Pittman Robertson uh, is the uh, Pittman Robertson is the uh, Federal Aid to Wildlife Restoration Act. It was passed in 1937. It is a 
self-imposed tax by hunters and shooters every time you purchase a firearm, ammunition, archery equipment to pay either a 10 or 11 percent excise tax on that. Those monies are accumulated by the, uh, by the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and then they're dispersed back to the states every year. The pot is divvied up and it's been increasing uh, considerably over the years. So to answer your question, the design uh, effort that's going on, I think it's about Additionally, on target, uh, recently uh, was awarded a uh, $12,000 grant to do some more educational work, which is what we're really wanting to do, is educate hunters and shooters. Um, and there's a possibility of a lot more of the uh, private grants, which we will be going to try to uh, bring in. Oh, my apologies. Chairman, we have a Hawaii Conservation Alliance Foundation board meeting going on at the same time, so I just rushed over because I promised Mr. Paul and Richard I'll be here. I very much so. We've been working on this uh, for a long time, uh, during the time while I served as the privilege of serving as first deputy, uh, we were able to uh, set aside the land next to the landfill. I think due diligence has been moving very steadily. The board is made up of, I serve as the senior advisor to the board uh, of On Target Incorporated. It's uh, officially, I'm sure it's Richard told you, uh, we've gone through the IRS 501c3 stuff. Uh, we have retired law enforcement. We have active uh, Hawaii County law enforcement involved. Uh, we have uh, former Department of Education deputy uh, for West Hawaii. A very responsible group of people hunters, educators, environmental people, uh, all working together to try to put together a world-class shooting range for the, for the county uh, and on behalf of uh, the department working together uh, to make possible this uh, facility. We also, for your information, have been very diligent and we have a res we have a official representative of the South Kohala, the Waikolo Resort uh, development Association sitting in on all of our meetings. Uh, on the sound testing, for example, that took, uh, uh, what you call, place last month, uh, we had the hotel people, the resort people all involved. We even took, uh, we even took a 50 caliber barrett to make sure that we had the loudest possible thing going off uh, during the sound testing. So I believe that this group has been very responsible moving forward very diligently with a much needed facility. So uh, we are hopeful that the board sees likewise. Uh, I did mention that there's uh, good potential for revenue coming in from, from this facility. It's going to be, in Bob's words, a world-class facility. And if you look at target shooting, uh, it's, it's gone crazy for participation. 15% kind of level for all shooting, uh, you know, equipment. Uh, my personal sense is that unless we can imagine a condition where on the island of Hawaii, which has so much subsistence hunters and, and sports enthusiasts in shooting, all totally disappearing, uh, it's responsible for us to provide an educational outlet where proper shooting and, and safety can be taught and practiced. And, and that's my personal 
reason for giving so much time in this effort because I think as long as we have people there, we ought to do it right. And the department has been very supportive, and so I've con kind of continued that effort since my time on the, in the department to help with this effort. Thank you. safety instructor for many years and my role on the board of uh, On Target Incorporated is to involve the under 60 crowd. <laughs> so uh, the uh, all joking aside, I think we have a responsibility to our uh, hunters on the Big Island, to our sports enthusiasts, to have a safe place to practice what they do. And as Bob said, we have quite a few subsistence hunters on the Big Island and they'll continue to do that. It's generational, it's been passed down for many generations to do that. I think they have a responsibility to support safe handling of firearms. Especially, um, uh, like it or not, we do have uh, an increase in firearm sales and if we don't have a good safe place for our young people and uh, older folks as well as we go shoot them, we have a problem on it. I think the range design, I think the, uh, the thought process that's gone into this has been great. I think it represents a, a, a wonderful opportunity for a public-private partnership in the true sense of the word, public and private. I think it brings together a lot of very good minds to make this thing happen and do it correctly. And something to be proud of for both the, um, the BLNR and for the uh, participants uh, on, the, on the private level. So I'm in full support, and as Mr. Gunn has asked, am I supporting him? And yes, I am completely. And uh, I thank you for your time. So I, th I think in during the, the planning and um, the design phase, once the EIS or EA, whichever EA or EIS, whichever route the final uh, environmental compliance goes, uh, once that's been gone through, then would be an opportunity that it, you know it could come back. The board could actually uh, <coughs> act on you know accepting the, uh, the document, processing the document, and at that point. Uh, if the timing is right, we could enter into uh, a curatorship agreement uh, to go forward. So during that interim period, uh, if there's uh, any, any additional uh, consideration for other partners and things like that that are actually designing how that should look, uh, that can be done through that period. Any questions for staff? Yeah. So um, would you approve? is to seek your approval to uh, allow us to uh, select a hearing officer and, and delegate the uh, authority, the authority to, to the chair to make the final selection of a hearing officer in the Kahala Court case, the 465 Kahala Association, which is an enforcement uh, action we brought before you several months ago involving the uh, erosion control, erosion control protection structure that we had sought, uh, uh, asked the homeowner to remove. Uh, they don't 
everyone agrees to call for a contested case hearing. And uh, now we are moving through the procedural part of uh, getting our ducks lined up to have a hearing. So the recommendation is now to appoint an inspection between officer delegation to the chair. Mm -hmm. I believe the, uh, uh, the landowner's representative is here. Chair and board members, for approval uh, for the landowner 4615 Hall Avenue report. And um, uh, today I'm, I'm in agreement with Mr. Lemo. Um, we do, as we sometimes are, uh, uh, we do support, uh, we requested the contested case here, and we believe uh, it is urgently needed, and so therefore we will concur in uh, uh, the recommendation before you. Um, uh, I did bring a photograph for photographs all of you, but rather than pass them, I'll just show you. This is uh, from about two weeks ago, the, the coconut blankets uh, and sandbags that were permitted to be installed are almost all gone due to uh, extremely high tides and, and surf conditions, and we expect uh, that within weeks, uh, the fences and coconut trees will start to get into the ocean, um, and so time is really of the essence to get uh, hearings officer appointed uh, and to get some resolution to this matter. And then ultimately, I, I understand we'll come back to you. Uh, so, um, with that said, we, we do encourage uh, the action coming before you. Thank you very much. Anyone else would like to testify on agenda item K3? Move to approve. Second. Move to All those in favor say aye. Aye. Move to Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item is B19, and presentation. had on our submittal just uh, the, a few recommended conditions that we uh, seek to avoid to adopt as a policy about not transferring certain type of lands uh, to, to the PLDC. Uh, obviously, any future dis actual disposition of an actual piece of land, uh, the board will be free to uh, determine whether the disposition is appropriate and so whether additional We have, uh, uh, on the history of information, and I'm sure you, know, you have that information before you, but today, you know, come before you, and, and this is after, obviously, some public hearings that we've had on the neighbor islands and here on Oahu. Uh, we, we've had uh, individual meetings with uh, people, uh, not people, but groups that uh, have been, uh, you know, have shown concerns for uh, the way of public land development corporation of PLDC has been moving forward. And we've... Uh, taken a bold step uh, uh, in the last uh, couple weeks saying that you know we, we've listened uh, to all of the comments uh, brought forth uh, to, to us in this hearing and, and out of the hearings and felt that at this point in time uh, what we'll be doing uh, in, in, in the very near future we're scheduling some uh, meetings with the stakeholders uh, parties that have come forward whether they're uh, for a PLVC or against uh, and, and, and sit down and and talk about the concerns that they have. 
In view of this, you know, we've, we've looked at uh, some of the concerns that were raised uh, by uh, these, uh, these groups and uh, felt that at this point in time it would be helpful uh, to, come, uh, to come forward to this board to, to say a, 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 a policy in the matter that some of these issues, not some, but the issue of, of conservation land, uh, the transferring of land in fee simple, and one, the last one would be uh, you know, to build a hotel in Poké, you know, which we're surprised that it, it is part of a plan we found out, but you know, this will uh, get some relief to uh, the people that have been uh, uh, looking or reviewing the documents, uh, you know, the planning documents uh, that are, are, are there for Poké, but uh, this is, uh, again, to relieve some of the concerns that uh, the people uh, have uh, come to us and, and, and talked about. So, although we have the uh, the <coughs> PowerPoint up there and, and goes to our goals and objectives, let me see first, you know, uh, I'm sure people, uh, when they see the optimization plan, they say, they'll, they'll say, what optimization plan? But, you know, what, what, what we did earlier, uh, we meaning uh, the staff and the board of PLDC, the board had approved the strategic plan and that set the guidelines for us for the future. And the strategic plan is part of and will be part of the optimization plan. So there, there may be some, not confusion, but it is part of it because the strategic plan does go over the goals and objectives. So that's part of you know, any kind of uh, optimization plan. But uh, real quickly, the, the goals uh, that are listed up there, you know, you can see it, uh, you know, to, to identify potential projects or uh, which is a goal one, and partnerships between communities and public and small businesses. Uh, detailed process agency involvement, uh, approvals that require a project to be achieved. Uh, and goal three, uh, work with the departments and, and in, in pursuing new uh, initiatives. And we've done this uh, previously, we've, we've met with the various departments of the state and city, and they do have some interest as far as uh, you know, wanting to move forward with, with, with projects. But these are all discussions. Uh, it's, it's, uh, it's time that I, I believe that uh, a body like PLDC can go out and talk to the various departments and see what they're thinking about and to see if we can uh, assist them in some of the projects that they have in mind and then talk and see how we can uh, remedy some of the problems that they have. And lastly, the goal is to help communities attract partners and, and for community reinvestment projects. And this is a very important part of our whole, whole process we look at the process now as, as, as uh, not what we initially, you know, really pushed and as far as just revenue, revenue, but PLDC is more than that. And uh, a, a lot of that, uh, a lot of our goals uh, will be to work with the communities, the nonprofits. Uh, we've heard uh, through our public hearings too that you know, some of these nonprofits, uh, you know, even the Tukunas, have had problems moving their projects forward. And I believe we can, you know, assist them in their efforts to, to bring their uh, participation. <clears throat> on another matter, we have guidelines, but this is our vision, basically, in, in, in our uh, strategic plan, which I said, which I mentioned earlier, that was approved by our board. And uh, you know, we, we're here to assist the state and county agencies. And this is what I just mentioned uh, a few minutes ago about us meeting with these uh, various departments to see how we can improve the parks and harbors, buildings, etc., and move them forward. Uh, and assist them basically is, is what it is to move the project uh, forward in, in, in a more expeditious uh, manner. We also work with uh, agencies to establish new programs, and whether these programs uh, you know lie in the area of, uh, uh, of uh, schools or, or other type of businesses. These this, these are some of the uh, opportunities that we'll be looking at. And thirdly, uh, assist state agencies achieving their core mission increasing their revenues. I believe you know, we've, uh, there's enough talk that, uh, about revenues. And we're here to assist uh, the, the state agencies or the county agencies uh, in, in doing this. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, this can, uh, uh, they can attain their, their, their goals. And lastly, uh, you know, to create jobs, obviously. This, this whole situation is to create jobs and partnerships. You know, the partnership portion is very important. It's not us doing it, it's, it's people out there. We're going to put people together uh, to, to, to move forward in project, and that's what we're all about. So if we have someone come in that, uh, that's interested in 
the project, but doesn't have the expertise or the funding, then we'll go out and find a partner for that. So very accommodating. So uh, we hope, we're hopeful that uh, you know we can move forward with that. Uh, so again, uh, what uh, the staff has, has uh, written uh, or, or have brought forward to you uh, with their recommendation, you know, we fully support the recommendation. Uh, and the board, in that the board will not transfer land in fee simple. And the land uh, in conservation district within the protected limited or resource subzones, sub except for funding group, uh, express waiver of, by the board with the proposed project is intended to protect natural resources or to create great benefits for the general public. And thirdly, we talked about the Pokey Park issue uh, with the building hotel there. So uh, we, we are definitely, uh, we've, uh, we've discussed it with staff and we'll put in support of uh, the recommendation. Um, sure, I have a question. Uh, what's the time frame for the development of the optimization plan? The optimization plan uh, is uh, was scheduled to be done by the time legislature rolls around because there's a report due to the legislature 20 days prior to. So part of it, as we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, is the strategic plan is part of the optimization plan. So uh, part of it is not done, uh, which is the inventory portion. And you know, we, I, I will probably be asking for a deferment on the inventory portion for the uh, the optimization plan. But we will be submitting a report to the legislature. And I believe uh, what's before you is is important to have in the uh, in the plan itself. Uh, you know that you are here to protect the land, and I think uh, this this does it. You know, it answers some of the concerns that the public has. So um, when you say before the legislature, that means in January. Yes, time. January. And then my second question is uh, the strategic plan that you mentioned. Um, is that available for public scrutiny? Is it online or? It's online and it was approved by our board uh, a couple months ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it, it's online for review, and obviously they can call us. And to create great benefits. The, the exceptions would be the tenants of technical resources are to create great benefits for the general public. Uh -huh. so, um, to, in, in conservation land? Yeah. Yes. Um, well, the benefit to, and hopefully I'm going to answer this question, but uh, the benefit to the public would be in the conservation land where you have uh, uh, you know, parks that are that you know, we can improve uh, beaches, uh, harbors, these are you know, the issues that we're looking at. Um, uh, let me take a step back. The harbors are, are, are separate from this, but you know, parks, uh, beaches, etc., um, uh, are things that we'll be looking at to improve uh, for the community, for the greater community. If, if I could try to answer that, I think in trying to uh, in trying to address public concern, public concern about conservation land. The idea to have an exception in there, the really, there might be some, we don't know all the possibilities that could come up, but there might be some useful project on general zone conservation land that we did not want to have an express prohibition against considering. So this, this exception is really out there in case there's something that pops up um, that provides a true opportunity to protect public land um, in partnering with some, some entity that we should be able to consider. That, that's the whole reason for that. And people who um, are mistrusting the residents will take that to that's just your way out to, uh, for some secret project. Yeah, there's no secret projects going on. It's just a way to reserve the ability should something pop up that requires us to take a look at it for, for whatever reason that we'd be able to take a look at. The board would always have the ability, in this case, because, it's, because we're talking about lands that belong to the board or under the jurisdiction of the board, 
the granting entity will always have the ability to add additional conditions based upon public input. Well, and the, and the board, um, the board would have the final say whether it's implemented. It would have the ability to yes or no. And in the case of the DOE, of course, they would have the same jurisdiction. That being said, um, you know, the thought that I have is that uh, this board does have the um, the discretion to entertain those projects within the conservation district that would otherwise qualify for conservation district use permit. And so I would think that that clause might be unnecessary. And it, what it does is it generates the appearance of a loophole. And so what I would suggest is to replace that with something like um, uh, where the proposed project is either intended to protect natural resources or otherwise would qualify for a CDUP. You know, because that would that would uh, make it fall with strictly within the realm of law that, that this board must adhere to. Um, that was the testimony that was provided by the Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation that listed all of the conditions under which conservation district use might be given. But that's um, already listed in the submittal. Yes, and, and, and you know, and so my point is, we recognize that this board must adhere to law, and then has the ability to establish policy. So, um, since um, since the law uh, already um, um, qualifies certain uses um, that that uh, that fall within the conservation district use permit and application process, that that second clause, all it does is is kind of muddy the waters in terms of our statement. Um, so that, that's the point that I'll make, and I might bring that up a little bit later as we, did, as we deliberate. Okay. So are you, Sam, are you saying that you basically would like the language that's in that um, top complete paragraph of those recommendations to uh, be incorporated down in B? Uh, no, not necessarily. I would uh, just strike the, that great benefit to the general public, since that is one of the CDUP clauses in the law and just say would otherwise qualify for a CBUP. Um, and that way, it, it falls strictly within adherence to, to the law and conservation district and makes clear what our policy is for, <coughs> for these kinds of transactions. Does your board, the PLDC, have they also reviewed these proposed guidelines and are in support of them? Yes. And <coughs> if this board didn't act at all, these folks could still act on, on that. Yes, we, we, we could, but you know, when we looked at the, the entire process again, and then having said many times that the, the, the the various uh, title holders to the land, uh, whether it be the state, in this case they live in R, or, or the county in their case, that they are truly the, the drivers of, of the bus, I say, you know. And they, you can add the conditions uh, to the, any kind of transfer of management rights and development rights to us. This provides you an opportunity to do this. And we feel that something like this is, is, is it's helpful. It's, it's, uh, it'll uh, answer some of the concerns again uh, that Public has to, to come forth with, and uh, I, I think it, it, it's a po positive move forward. Uh, this is where it comes from. But as you said, yes, uh, you know, we, we could probably, if not could probably, we could uh, move forward with something like this. But uh, we felt strongly again that you are the overseers of the land, you know, as the board. Uh, yeah, I think in general, I, I mean, I think you guys are Yeah, so I'm just trying to think of how yeah. this all works together. We had the one meeting before we came here already with the LAC a number of months ago. Uh, and so that's been kind of like our sole interaction. And obviously, we've got to have a lot more interaction. Right. So it's probably good we're here. And then, as we mentioned earlier, too, I mean, all of these, uh, any kind of requests, you know, we will be obviously have, uh, be coming uh, before the board, uh, I mean, on, on numerous occasions to, to have discussions in regards to uh, our interest in some of the, uh, the lands that you have, uh, you know, that you oversee. Any questions? Robert Harris, if, before you start speaking, I just want to make it clear for everyone, because I know I can see it in your eyes already, that there's going to be testimony regarding repeal. This body is, does not 
have the jurisdiction over the appeal that that is uh, the purview of the legislature. So if you could, I know you want to say it, if you could say it real quickly and then get to the, the concerns that the board does have the purview of. Thank you, Chair, members of the board, uh, aloha and happy holidays. Uh, my name is Robert Harris. I'm the director of the Sarah Hawaii chapter. I appreciate the opportunity to be able to testify on this matter. Um, I'd like to reiterate some of the concerns that were brought up by the native Hawaiian legal report. Um, specifically, and, and, and let me first start, I do appreciate the Public Land Development Corporation uh, efforts to recognize the concern about development on conservation land. And we all share similar interest in ensuring that conservation land is reserved for the which is intended, which includes protecting watershed, includes recreation, includes conservation, and, and just simply even preservation. So it was just acknowledged and stipulated we all care about that. But again, obviously the devil is in the detail here. And our concern with pushing forward a policy that says no development on conservation land unless there's sort of this exception that it's in the public interest, becomes problematic just in that um, it's a very subjective standard and, you know, the Native Hawaiian Report thought did a very nice job of articulating some specific examples and you can do the example of, for example, a hotel uh, on the uh, Mikibi coastline, which could bring in a great deal of revenue and help fund a lot of good programs. But on the whole, you can look at that and say it doesn't really comply with the intent of preserving that, that entire area and, and the decades of controversy and final resolution, the idea that it would be preserving conservation land and entrusted to the state for protection. So uh, our concern, particularly with this uh, uh, policy with the exception, it does create great, great, great you know, potential problems in the future. How do you actually, uh, the devil's in the details kind of situation. So we'd recommend either you adopt a policy saying that we're not going to use the Public Land Development Corporation for conservation land. And, you know, that is a very valid policy call on this board because conservation lands were intended to be protected, were intended to have a greater um, uh, heightened scrutiny for development projects going forward. That's why development projects come to you for approval. And it's an unusual process. We don't do that for any other areas. And so, you know, it wouldn't be unusual for that this board to say, we're going to keep those regulations in place. We're going to keep that we have the oversight rather than uh, transferring the oversight to the POVC. Otherwise, I think there has to be an affirmation of the current eight criteria you have, which include ensuring that the use is in conformance with the intent of the conservation area. And I guess I recommend, uh, to the extent that I can, uh, Mr. Gong's suggestion I think is good, but I'd actually reference the specific staff, uh, administrative rule has those eight criteria, a subject to those eight criteria, because we recognize the fact that we sought to do it. I've gone on for uh, a very long time, and I do want to wrap up. Let me just simply add this. This board is one of the few boards that has uh, the entire big picture. You have to see the importance of conservation and preservation, as well as the need for occasional development projects. For example, uh, homes on Pantless, which is technically conservation land, you, you can see the big picture we're allowing that to go on is, is could be okay. Um, and because you have the big picture, you can do this, this balancing action. The Public Lands Development Corporation, by intent, has a much narrow range of activities. And, and by statute, their primary purpose is to look for uh, profit generation. And so the concern with transferring a conservation project to them is that that big picture may no longer be there. And while there may be good intent, and there may be good people there, and I'm not saying otherwise. The, the reality is, under the statute, the, the criteria by which they judge is very narrow and very limited. So again, that's why I really encourage you to try to keep specific conservation land projects here at this board where you can see the entire picture. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Yeah, it, you, you know, in, in this amendment, um, exactly what you're asking is, is actually in this amendment. So I mean, the, the restriction on transfer of lands within the conservation district on a case-by-case -case basis where the project is consistent with the purpose of the conservation district, meets all requirements for the issuance of a conservation district use permit, and, uh, and then if they're willing to continue to improve the natural resources or to create a greater benefit for the general public. So I don't see where this is skirting and giving our rights away to the conservation district. One second. Quote the entire 
staff members here. Lands are in conservation district within a protected limited resource subzone, except upon express waiver on the board, where the proposed project is either either intended to protect natural resources or to create great benefit to the general public. And this is uh, page three, this middle. So the or to create great benefit for the public is subjective. Uh, in that it is a great benefit from a financial resource, uh, generating more uh, revenue, is it? Again, I just want to make sure I'm answering the question correctly. Well, mm -hmm. what's that? Yeah, so, so then, and if you're not just looking at the ABC recommendations, within the full submittal, which is what, what the board policy would be based on, at the top paragraph of this is, is it, it lists those eight criteria and then, you know, they'd have to qualify for a CDP on that case-by-case uh, -case basis in order to approve that transfer in that case. And, and again, I guess I'm looking specifically at the recommendation, which is based off the policy, which I assume would be, you know, usually there's a lot of fun in the actual conclusion. Here, um, that line is problematic for the, the, the subpart, which is for the great, great benefit to the public. To the public. Yeah. Um, and, and maybe we're <coughs> there's a, a split between the list and the cup uh, here, but I think that language would have to be clarified and you can just write the state of the criteria. But that being said, um, you, know, you already have administrative rules that accomplish that, correct? So um, what, what effect does this policy do? Um, and in general, what does the policy do regardless? Normally we have rules and we have guidance. You know, a uh, policy is not necessarily on the board. So perhaps it's My understanding is that they're not exempt section 343. Is that correct? Okay. I'll, I'll, give, I'll give you the answer. Sure. Yes, no, maybe. Um, they, they have said that they are obliged under 343, and nobody's really contested that. So. Okay. I think there's some legal uncertainty. There's a WAG opinion which says that they do have to follow it. And so, again, nobody's been really that inclined to say, you know, to say otherwise. What about conservation district laws? And HRS number, but um, seven one or whatever it is. That, so, is, do they have to follow that, or is that something that this board can say, okay, we're going to transfer this piece to you folks, and you don't have to follow it? They, they would be exempt um, from all land use, which includes conservation designation, which includes building code permits, which includes height restriction, right. show on setback, uh, coastal right. zone management acts. Right. So in this one, where you say, yeah, they have to follow, perhaps have to follow the, the eight points. That doesn't say it will follow the CDBT process. 
which is plainly very rigorous. The claim that they do not have to follow that. Okay. If you transfer the balance rights over to them, this board will no longer have any oversight. Well, we could transfer and say you still got to follow C2, right? It could be qualified transfer. Correct. Although, when you start kind of going through creative things, right, you have to write a contested case. I mean, you start going through a lot of, you know, like how do you really shape that? And so I guess that's why my suggestion was, you know, why isn't this body simply just keep control of these projects? This body can make the policy directing that we're going to expedite projects that are in the public interest and government's rights. I mean, there's ways this board can move these projects along rather than transfer them to CABC or allow the regulatory oversight that's no longer there. I don't think that's the case. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, members of the board of Latin and Action Resources. My name is Shannon Wood. I'm speaking on behalf of the Winnetka Hopewa Alliance. However, the issue specifically that I'm going to be discussing is an issue that is connected directly with the Public Land Development Corporation. However, I am not speaking on behalf of the stadium authority nor the employees of a local stadium. So I want to make this very clear. But I have been working with them for three years. And we started working on this issue in November of 2009 when the discussions began about the conference realignment for the University of Hawaii, particularly for its football team. And my husband and I have been very strong supporters of the University of Hawaii at Manoa's athletic program. We were married in 1978. We used to have dates and going to baseball games on the Manoa campus. But what the issues that we were very concerned about was one day as we were walking out of the stadium and taking a look at how just the stadium facility was, we really needed to take a look at how we could create something. And then for the next six months, I began doing research on this and discovered that the Department of Land and Natural Resources signed a contract with the Department of Interior in 1968 for that piece of property. The Department of Interior currently still owns 60% of that directly. But there are requirements that they have established and would need to be removed by the United States Congress and then reestablished at the state legislature. It's a very complex sort of thing. But because of the fact that there's been so much controversy, by the way, just to let you know, we passed out this past summer Act 282-2012, which establishes the creates the stadium facility special fund into which shall be deposited a portion of the proceeds generated by the PLDC on Aloha Stadium lands and facilities. So in other words, what we did is after we were able to get and the governor signed it and so forth, but nothing has been done because of the controversy that has been generated by the bigger picture with the Public Land Development Corporation. So I have established a connection across the street with the, I can only do the state senate right now because the state house hasn't been organized, but just in case there is the Public Land Development Corporation Act 2011 is repealed, we need to protect the stadium special fund. In wearing my other hat, my professional hat, which is the head of the Wimmera Hupua Alliance, I have very grave concerns about some sort of development of conservation land. So I started attending the PLDC meetings in September of 2011 and I have not missed a single monthly meeting and I've attended the public meetings that were held on the rules and the set and the... But what I want... 
Yeah, what I well, what I specifically on this one is that I really do support what the TLDC wants to do with the protection of conservation land. In order to protect the concept of the Public Land Development Corporation, I think that is extremely important because it's not just conservation land that they're going to be in charge of. It can be the stating authority, it can be land that was owned by the Department of Education, Department of Public Safety, I mean, it's, it's everything. And if the PLDC gets gets put away, then it's, you know, we're taking a gigantic step backwards in terms of, of how we handle public land, not just the state, but also the city and but the county, county land. That's, that's more for the legislature. Yeah, and so what I, what, you know, uh, yeah, I have, this is a two-part thing for me. One is to make sure that the stadium special fund, you know, is, is, is stays alive and, and well, and then they can move on, make, you know, maybe move it into DBT or back to DAGS or whatever it may happen to be. Or, uh, but more importantly, in my day job, I want to make sure that conservation lands are well protected. Thank and so what is your, what does that boil down to with the uh, uh, recommendation here? So what is your stance on the recommendation that's before you? Well, actually what I, you know, one of the things, I just got a copy of, of this yesterday. So, uh, you know, in terms of, but I have been tracking, read all the rules and, you know, the, uh, the uh, strategic plan and so forth. There are some things that I think need to be addressed. Primarily I'm not talking about the strategic plan or oh. the optimization plan. I'm talking about the recommendation that's before this board yes. right now. Right. Do you have any issues or, or suggestions the or are you in support of the... The thing I make sure is that it's clarified and put in writing. That, that is... About the conservation Yes, about okay. conservation About the protection and of the conservation by, Because of the fact that it, to address some of the concerns of people here and other uh, envi environmental organizations in order to make sure that we don't wind up going across the street and canceling, you know, and, and, and so repealing the entire bill. That's important. Okay, thank okay, you. Thank you. Robert Patricia. I came in here from the Big Island um, because uh, that's what we have to do in order to justify these things. And, and I want to convey first that uh, you know Hawaii County's disappointment and frustration with the process, and that we have to fly here. Uh, when Mr. Hirguchi came out to the Big Island one time, that he did at hundreds. I think it was 300 in Hilo and, and plenty in Kona, and we we were under the pressure he was going to come back to the revision of the rules, and that didn't happen. So. I just want to say that we're frustrated with that. Um, it gives us a severe disadvantage in being able to participate in the process. Uh, and we, this does impact all of us on the outer islands, so we do need a, a voice and a way to participate in this process. It uh, doesn't seem available to us. So, um, let's see. Okay, so I've come here to uh, specifically address uh, what constitutes a grant benefit, a great benefit for the general public. Um, and does, so here's, does that language of Senate Resolution, does the language of Senate Resolution 25 that urges the PLC, PLDC and the DLNR to develop and implement geothermal projects on the islands of Hawaii and Maui refer to the projects that create a great benefit for the general public, such as DLNR would Louding on conservation lands. Um, so uh, this ties in Senate Resolution 25 is, you know, encouraging the PLDC to do geothermal projects, and it ties into Act uh, 9, Act 55, and Act 97, and Resolution 25, and it, it all it's one big thing. It's one big. It's hard to separate them out. And this uh, being able to, what they're requesting here, to be able to use these lands for great public benefit, we see as a threat to our conservation lands. And, uh, Act 97 actually removed the geothermal subzones, which allows them to do geothermal development anywhere, basically. Um, so 
we have a problem with that. We, we want a voice in what's going to be happening on our islands. I represent the Punapona Alliance out of, out of the Big Island. So we believe that geothermal as a heavy industry um, is contrary to the resolution to be considered an appropriate use for conservation lands. We don't think a heavy industry is an appropriate use for some conservation lands. Would your, would your recommendation be to drop that language? Our recommendation would, would be to repeal that. <laughs> repeal. And we're going to go to legislation. Yes, we don't, we, we don't, yeah, we don't think that they should be able to exempt projects because, because of Act 97 and because of Resolution 25, we think that's going to include geothermal projects. And we think it could easily include geothermal projects. So our position was this was passed in a way that leads to mistrust of the public, of, of the government by the public. And uh, so we don't think it can be fixed. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for taking the time to come by and to get and by giving specific examples. I do understand that. I think it's part of that process. I 
I do understand that, but I, I do see that um, what could likely happen is that the uh, conservation land would be taken out of it and it would just go forward like that. And even so, it's, I don't think it's good policy. It's not a good act. It's not the benefit of the land. I understand that. I understand that. I just want to understand. We are required to do the administrative rules of the process after the legislation is passed. Chair and members. Um, my name is Jocelyn Doan. I'm the Senior Public Policy Advocate at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs. Mahalo for the opportunity to testify today. Um, um, Economize for not uh, sending the testimony earlier. We were working on it uh, yesterday. First, wanted to say that um, the staff identification of lands that shouldn't be considered eligible for PLD2 projects we believe is an important part of the board's management responsibilities, and so we commend the staff for introducing the proposed policy. We do, however, have some comments and um, suggested amendments to the policy section, the proposed policy, um, and we've um, drafted it out for you, so if you like, you just cut and paste it into um, the middle. Uh, so basically, our comments are, and I'm not gonna just read the testimony because you have it in front of you, but just summarize it, um, you know, we recognize that, again, that this is a, a good first step, um, but we note that you may want to consider a more formal and legally enforceable way to declare your PLDC um, related on policies such as through rulemaking, through the BLNR rulemaking. Also, um, the exception to the proposed restriction, um, which as has been discussed already by many of the members, to create a great benefit for the general public is we agree it's ambiguous and open to interpretation, and arguably any project um, is a, could create a great benefit for the general public. <coughs> um, could render the restriction meaningless uh, in, if it, it's interpreted broadly. Um, while we, you know, I, I hear what the chair is saying, um, and that there he wants some flexibility so that when the board, um, if there is a good project that the board believes does further the board's responsibilities. They want to leave room in order for these folks to do that. Um, and lastly, uh, the policy is actually related only to the protected limited and resource subzone. And as we all know, the general all all conservation lands um, contain important natural and cultural resources, and we believe particularly to our beneficiaries. Um, and so, uh, just to go over really briefly what our suggestions are. Um, so we just took the um, draft of the submittal and amended it. So number one would be the same, the board will not transfer lands and fees to PLDC, which we believe reiterates the statutory <coughs> restriction that already exists. Number two, the board will not transfer development rights to PLDC for lands within the conservation district, not meaning all the subzones. And if the board feels as if they want to leave some flexibility and want that articulated in the policy, we would suggest the language, a waiver may be considered on a case-by-case -case basis by the board if the PLDC has successfully gone through the DLNR conservation district use application permitting process and the project meets all requirements for the issuance of a conservation district use permit. So I think that kind of is a, in line with what um, Member Khan has um, said. Um, and we added something, <laughs> um, which we believe is consistent with the PLDC strat plan, which is number three. The board will not transfer a development rate for agricultural lands eligible for designation as important ag lands for purposes other than agriculture. And we believe, again, that that's consistent with the PLDC's approved strat plan. And um, lastly, we left the provision with regards to Poke. Thank you so much. Did I have questions? I do. With regards to agriculture, what is part of the agricultural land and part of the business plan for an agricultural venture to support the small big farm? Um, I think it depends on what your interpretation of uh, 
what what is allowed on ag lands, and I and I think. I mean, I mean, to tackle the sitting on the, the board of agriculture, there are farmers that are from the board, so mm -hmm. you'd like that ability to, to either put a photovoltaic or some wind power to uh, reduce our cost. And so I can't remember the specific um, status, but I know that there has been over the last few years um, amendments to um, land use. Uh, the land use law related to what's allowable on, I, on ag lands. And so I suppose to the extent that it's allowable, that, that would be consistent with this statement. Um, I, I think I would have to look at the actual current language. But I think open now would it be an allowable use on ag land. So would it be the I think it's been changed over the last few years, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Chair, I think you know, bringing ag into this discussion without being noticed and being broad, broad ag probably worth looking at for sure, but I think it's something that's uh, I can appreciate that. We're stepping around. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, mahalo. Chairman Isla and land board members, and thank you very much for your comments. I agree with most of the testifiers so far, uh, with the exception of Ned Woods. Um, what has not been done so far in accordance with the statute, and which we had hoped that the PLDC might do today, <coughs> is define culturally sensitive. Perhaps this board could honor that term by defining it so people will actually know what this PLDC is required to protect. Um, that being said, and that being uh, something that is much of a placebo to many of us, we still have development and development needs as a priority of the PLDC and now coming before the BLNR. Um, you brought up ag land, and I know it's not noticed. I, I respect that, but the question was asked, and that was going to be one of my comments, um, because it is not part of this. And if you consider conservation land, you need to consider ag land, because they are part of our ultimate sustainability, and not only just ag land, but A, B, C, and D ag land classifications. And if you want to do something with great public benefit, such as constructing wind farms, uh, or better yet, solar farms, you would need to consider this for the D land, not the A land. So um, there are a lot of considerations to be made, restricting conservation lands to particular zones is restrictive. Uh, we have many historic sites. Um, you know, this, this is still wide open. And I appreciate the effort to be able to um, place a little control on this um, way out of control um, law of the PLDC. But um, we need to rely on the BLNR for many things protection of our public assets. And um, we don't know if we can yet because we need the BLNR to be strong and take positions in the public interest. And that's all I could say. Thank you. Corporation. I'd like to point out a couple things before I talk about my written testimony. First of all, it's not true that the Public Lands Development Corporation adopted this policy before you by the PLDC. Um, Mr. Arnuzzi told you this is PLDC's policy. 
They've never done so, at least not at an open meeting. We've never seen this discussed. So for him to say to you, you know, the PLDC has adopted this policy is not accurate. They never considered this. They never, I never, they've never considered this uh, as this is laid out. You missed something in the break that we said his members and his, his members should be tenants, not as a board meeting, have considered this. Well, they, that's so you really a violation of the sunshine law. Not, not, not with each other. You guys cannot serially communicate in a way to give him an informal approval of a policy like that. That's completely contrary to the law. That's not what we did. We said these are things that the board is taking up, and he talked to them and individually. Okay? So, but we take your point. Okay. So, if this is not PLDC's policy, and you should not treat it as such, it has not been adopted at an open meeting of the PLDC. This is some, an independent production. I also think it's, an, it's somewhat bad faith, Chair Ila, for you to organize a meeting of folks concerned about environmental and data point interest next Monday when you're discussing this today. You should postpone consideration of this policy until you talk to the people you say you want to get input from. Third thing I'd like to point out is PLDC does not need to adopt the rules now. In 2008, the, the legislature uh, enacted a law requiring the Department of Health to adopt rules regulating greenhouse gas emissions. It is 2012 now. Those rules have not been adopted. Similarly, the legislature enacted a law regarding important ag lands that gave the Land Use Commission authority to adopt rules. Those rules have never been adopted, haven't even been drafted. There's no schedule for any public hearing. So for you to assert that the PLDC must adopt rules, yes, it must. It doesn't need to do so now. You can let them sit. So, let's get to where, why this uh, issue before you is where the rubber hits the road. You and members of the PLDC have asserted that the Public Lands Development Corporation is not exempt from environmental laws. That is not true. This is a classic example. Your rules, you have eight criteria for a use in the conservation district. These are very important rules. They're rigorous rules. They're rules that you guys apply correctly in deny Hawaiian Electric's proposal to build a 138 kV tower uh, atop Ahila Ridge. They're rules that um, uh, you use to prevent uh, Hawaiian Electric from building a dam at Honolii, which would have ruined really the only good surf spot uh, in, in the Hilo side of the Big Island. These rules are terribly important, and they're rigorous. <coughs> there are eight of them. You can't replace these eight with one saying, as long as there's a, a benefit to the general public. That is absurd. That is not protection of conservation district land. And with all deference to um, uh, Mr. Pacheco, simply because there is uh, some prefacatory language in the um, earlier section of your policy discussion. What's key is what you adopt. If any lawyer will tell you, it's, it's what's the motion? And the motion is those, those three elements there. And so you would be formally adopting a policy in which you abandon the requirement that these eight rigorous criteria be applied to any project in the conservation district. And that's completely inappropriate. Completely inappropriate. Um, it allows for these real possibilities, as we suggest in our, in our testimony. It allows for someone to come forward and say, we're going to build hotels at Queen's Beach, at Kaibi. That was a very, very real proposal the community fought against. We fought to get those lands acquired by the public. We fought to get the lands placed in the conservation district. And now, maybe we, you guys won't be here, but it, you have this policy that allows someone in five years, ten years, to say, you know what? State parks need revenue. We can just put this, we'll start with a Starbucks. And then we'll have, you know, a hotel just for a little revenue because DLNR needs money. We all know DLNR needs money. And, you know, Hollywood is so urbanized. We can accommodate a Starbucks and just a small hotel. Just a small hotel. It's so realistic. Andy Anderson is proposing a hotel on city owned land, Haleiwa Regional Park. It's a realistic proposal. So what we're saying here is not far-fetched. And so the protection that's in the law is abandoned 
by the creation of the PLDC, and you further exacerbate it by adopting a policy like this. Instead, what you need to do is either say you're not going to let any conservation district lands be transferred to the PLDC, or adopt the policy articulate or the the um, wording that the Office of Hawaiian Affairs has presented to you. But it's really um, deceptive to suggest that what's before you today is to provide to uh, address or accommodate the concerns that the public has articulated. What it is is a fundamental misunderstanding of the law and an attempt to placate inappropriately. Thank you. My name is Kim Sulisentis, and I'm from the Waianae District. And rather than echo what everybody else has said, because I think the articulation has been excellent this morning regarding some of the concerns, I think what we all need to do is take a step back and say, okay, so what does greater public benefit mean? Again, in prior testimony regarding the rules for the PLDC, that has been part of my frustration is, what are the criteria? What are the things that you're going to critique that allow you to make a decision that leads you to something that says, yes, that's for the greater public good, if you will? And again, you've heard some examples that were given today, and I'll give you another one. What's to prevent a landfill book from being thrown into a conservation area? You're not putting up buildings, necessarily, but it could be argued, as the city has argued many times, that landfills located in certain areas and utilizing <coughs> certain lands that were not approved with the initial conception of the project is for the greater good. So again, what does that mean? And what are the types of projects or guidelines that you want to give? Because it's our public land for these greater public good. If we can't provide criteria for what that means, what are you passing to? Are you giving carte blanche investigative powers for what that greater public good and benefit is to someone else? Or will you really have the final say once that responsibility, if you will, has been transmitted to another board? Everybody keeps saying, as the title agency, you'll have final approval. But I will tell you, as with other projects in this state, once momentum gets going, it's very, very difficult to say no. And we've seen it time and again where you get enough people riled up emotionally regarding certain things, whether it's right thing, wrong thing, marginal, it's very difficult to say no. And that's my concern, is what does that mean? Specifically, what does that mean to you and and the entire process regarding the decision-making process when you're the caretakers for us of these lands. And that's my concern with everything that I have heard this morning and that caveat in there, which can be extremely subjective, mm -hmm. and it could be counter to what we individually and maybe collectively as a state or as a county, believe is for the greater benefit for the public. And it's something that we need to think about. It's not something that should be passed over as easily as saying, yeah, we'll throw that in there and, you know, we'll always have the greater public good in mind. The question is, what is that? What is that definition? And if we have no criteria, Anything I damn well see. As long as I can get people to believe it's a great benefit. Or a certain select organization, a certain select people to believe it's a great benefit. Whether or not 
the larger population necessarily believes that. And that's, I think, what you're trying to decide today, is what does that mean, and how does that translate to projects that some people may feel very offended at, potentially being considered a greater benefit, greater public benefit, in a conservation area. So I would, with everything that I have heard, I have not looked at all of the test, written testimony that's come in, but I would seriously consider looking at some of the things that I've heard this morning and consider putting some either caveats on that or at least not allowing that portion to go through with this policy until you yourselves are satisfied that you understand what you intend and can communicate that clearly to the public. Because right now, I will tell you, if you ask 50 people across the state, depending upon what their background is and what, where they're coming from, you're going to get a different interpretation of what they consider greater benefit to the public. And at that point, you've lost it. You've completely lost it. And you've lost control. And you've you're going, you could potentially lose credibility as being those stewards. And I think that's part of the most important thing that you need to consider this morning, is what does that mean? Not just for you as a board in trying to get things done, but what does that mean from the larger perspective that's out there? So I would ask that, that serious consideration be given during your deliberation. Thank you. You know, again, for me, it's a matter of where that property is and what it can be used for, and is it in concert with either what that county or what that community envisions for that land. And you're tossing it into a bucket that, again, moves it not out of your control, but allows consideration to be given for things that may or may not be counter to what that county or community envisions for that land. And we've gone through this many times out in our district. And the, the, our, our community has testified 100% against projects. And it doesn't matter in cases where we've been overridden by the city council. And it's not turned out to be positive projects, but guess what? It's now in our backyard. So it depends on how you do it. I mean, and that's what I've been trying to articulate. Every time the rules have been heard for the PLDC, you have to provide some criteria and guidelines because if you don't, you're all over the map and there's nobody to help guide you in how to best marry with the local community or county with what they envision is good business practices for their land. And again, if the state wants to take the position of I'm the czar of everything, you know, that's one perspective. But I think you also need to recognize that there has to be partnerships. And you can't just go run roughshod everybody. So as far as fee simple lands are concerned, in my mind, it depends on where and what they're concerned with. The first recommendation is that the board will not transfer As it's to not support, then I'm fine. Because at least it leaves it here for public decision making and hopefully partnerships. Yep. I'd like to um, call uh, uh, Lloyd Haraguchi Takaki. Been listening to, to what has been said so far. Um, given the testimony that's been provided so far, 
Um, what's your uh, and I mentioned I mentioned the suggested revision to the to the recommendation um, that would scratch the clause about creating greater benefit to the general public and in, and replacing that with uh, consistent with the conservation district rules your TR thirteen five thirty C um, in order to get the eight explicit uh, items into the um, into this policy. Um, would that be would that be okay with you? Yes, it would be. Mm -hmm. um, I also heard the I also heard the general concern that um, rather than singling out specific um, subzones of the conservation district, that we make it that uh, this board's policy is not to transfer lands within the conservation district except except upon express waiver by the board consistent with those eight with those eight uh, rules. Would, would that be all right? I think that leaves still the flexibility because it, it comes back to you at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So whether it's three or four, all of them, I mean, I think yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm okay with including all of them. Thank you. Okay, you're adopting the OHA language, yeah. language is pretty much that, except for the Aglan one, which I yeah. consider yeah. 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 I mean, it's an important issue, but not one that we could uh, that we could address. Yeah. 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 I haven't seen the language. I'll be just the. Uh, let me read it for you. Oh yeah, there you go. Now I don't have to. Read. Um, it, it, it changes it from uh, the three point exception clauses into full sentences, which I kind of like. Um, so it changes the first one, the board will not transfer land in fee. Um, the second, the board will not transfer development rights within the conservation district, period, no mention of subzones. Um, and then the second one talks about the waiver on a case-by-case -case basis by the board, consistent with conservation district use application process. The third was the ag one, which I would which I say we right. cannot because of sunshine rules. Um, and then the cold case state park one is unchanged essentially. Right. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Is that all right? That's all. You have anything? No. <laughs> <laughs> you okay? <laughs> yeah. All right. Sam, can I expand on what you just said yeah. briefly? Um, so looking at all our recommendations. I think what's key for me here is seeing that any proposed project goes through the CDEQ process. And that's mentioned here in this language. It says uh, it's a waiver to be considered <coughs> if GLDC has successfully gone through the DLR conservation district use application, conservation district use application committee process. Uh, I like to add one word. I would say it's through the complete process. And so all our processes here would really for that's one of some projects that uh, have not gone through because of the fact that it's UEP. And others have, in fact, a correct one actually approved in the general subzone the extension of the Kekaha landfill. There was very little testimony against it. So, um, but it went through the whole process. Right? And that that process helps identify that public good. Right? And we've got a really good process for that. And if you go through that whole process and you get your CBP, that to me is, is, is the key, and then we have really worked to identify the So you would say, you would add words. I just want to complete. You would have complete successfully gone <coughs> completely through the dealing on conservation yeah. issues. I don't really understand why you need. If you're saying you have to, they have to go through the process, the then process that's the question. Process. Process. Yeah. 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 We don't have a partial process with the CBP stuff. Yeah, yeah. 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 Mayor Messing worked with us. You make it quick. I think, you know, uh, it's frustrating for me in this discussion because um, in you know, a large part, larger picture, there seems to be this, it's my understanding that the statute, um, the, for the PLDC to do anything has to have approval from the landowner. And for the state land, that's this board. Is that, that's correct? Yeah? Okay, so this, this idea that, you know, we're giving up ability to make decisions over our lands, you know, it's frustrating for me. Secondly, you know, in relation to uh, Mr. Frankel's testimony that, um, you know, the above language doesn't have anything to do with the recommendation, that's not, that's not correct. We always, you know, and not always, but in many cases, 
our recommendations reference the discussion that's in the submittal, as in this one, that that, consistent with the above discussion, the board adopts policy. So I'm fine with having this stuff in here, but you know, I'm just, the stuff we're talking about is actually, for the most part, in this discussion already. So I, I think what we're doing is clarifying language and putting in the recommendations, and that's fine with me. I just, I just want to say for the record that, you know, this, what, what B is saying in relation to consistent with the above discussion is that the only way we transfer something in the conservation district is through the, going through the process and determining that um, it meets all the requirements for the issuance of conservation district use permit. I mean, it's, it's in the submittal, so um, anyway. I'm fine with moving that down, I'm fine with, and I also like the fact that we're not restricting it to just a protected limited resource, that seems also. I, I, I echo your, your frustration, um, and um, just, uh, but, and so my rephrasing, or, or the rephrasings that we're considering here, um, just deal with explicitly making it clear what the position <coughs> is, clearer than, than uh, what was stated, because what was stated obviously had some ambiguity to it in, in the eyes of the public. Um, you know what? I do have one issue that was brought up in testimony, um, and I'm not sure where it stands. I think I would like to have just a short discussion with our attorney in the executive session. Uh, Are you making that motion? Do we go in executive session? Our duties, privileges, liabilities, responsibilities, and immunities. Thank you. Aye. We're in a break now, executive session, as the uh, board uh, has a conference with uh, legal, legal counsel. I expect it will be a um, short, uh, short meeting, and uh, let me uh, try and stay with it for a while, otherwise I will shut down and come back uh, when they when they uh, come back for a decision on this to me it seemed that there was a problem uh, with the definition of uh, great benefit to the public and that uh, could be decided arbitrarily to be anything. Uh. Hey, how's it? How's it going, man? You flew in, huh? Yeah. Well, we came in yesterday for a meeting. We brought Harry Kim. We're trying to put something together over here. He couldn't stay for the day, but we'll be back. Cool. And I'd like good, to man. get your phone number, maybe, or something. Sure. You know, I. Facebook. I'll, uh, I'll go get a card. I got some cards in okay. my car. And okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> One of the people who uh, flew in um, from the island of Hawaii, the Big Island, was uh, Robert Petrucci, I believe his name. Uh, one of the one of the criticisms of the PLDC has been that it's very Oahu centric it's, and because of that uh, very business centric uh, developer centric corporate centric um, so we do have we do have people here today who uh, flew in from the other island I want to get an interview with uh, Frankel, the attorney from Native Hawaiian Legal Corporation, who is back there in the frame. He's talking to um, Jocelyn Doan of uh, OHA, Office of Hawaiian Affairs. I 
when Robert comes back, we'll try and get an interview with him. He, he had to fly in. We'll see uh, what's up. If you just joined us, we're on a break. The uh, board is in executive session to um, confer with legal counsel on various legal issues. minutes in. Um, I'm going to cut out since there's nothing happening. Uh, I'm thinking uh, things will start up in a few minutes, so hang on. I'll be right